Hey guys, welcome to Homeschooling with High School. I'm excited about this session because once again, we have a guest who's going to be joining us who is actually one of our moderators. You will find her on the high school group in the app. And she has been just a wealth of information for those of you that are trying to use Gather Round or find out if it actually is cohesive enough and can be used and implemented for high school, especially for those of you that are trying to track credits and um, have specific educational goals in mind. So we are gonna be talking today about our uh, homeschool record keeping journal, our tracker, and she's gonna be showing you how she uses that for high school and an example of the pages. So we're really gonna walk you through what it looks like, but I really want you to walk away from this session, whether you're looking at high school in the future and you're trying to decide if Gather Round is something you can use all the way through, or whether you are approaching or in the midst of high school and wondering if this is something that will work for your family, Keep in mind that everybody has different goals. Everybody has different requirements, state standards, provincial standards. There's, there's so many different scenarios out there that it is very difficult, if not impossible, to sum it all up into one session and say, this is it. This is how high school works. It's just not possible because it's different depending on your family and your child. So as you're kind of listening to this session, maybe take some notes and think about and do it with your high schooler. What are their goals? What do they need to achieve those goals? Are there specific courses that they need if they wanna get into a certain um, course of study in, in university or college and what GPA do they need and how many credits do they need? Take a look at, and you can find this by searching online, what are your state standards or your provincial standards? What does graduating through homeschooling look like in your state or province? This is really important and it can be a little bit difficult sometimes to nail down this information. Sometimes it's even different from county to county, um, school district to school district. So you might need to contact a school, you might need to do some additional research on like a, a you know, your your Ministry of Education or whatever you have in your area to find out what the requirements look like. Here in BC, um, there are certain requirements depending on if you are wanting to get a diploma. Pretty much here, you cannot get a high school diploma unless you go through a school. So there's there's different things, different schools do things different ways. Some schools say you have to do it basically distance education through us. Other schools say, okay, you'll have more flexibility and freedom, but you have to make sure to hit on these things. It's different everywhere. So ask yourself or do some research and find out what are the requirements where you live. Now, one thing that I want to, I kind of want to leave you with before I, I pass this off over to Darcy is that when you are looking at all of these different requirements, um, Honestly, you guys, so much changes so quickly for our kids, especially in high school. They are trying to make decisions of what they want to do with their life. I'm still figuring that out. Our kids are not going to know that from the day that they graduate. It's not like all of a sudden they reach some, some, I don't know, an unseen milestone and now they know exactly what they want to do with their life. They're going to figure it out. So because there's trial and error, I think having grace and looking at it not as a linear thing where there's a beginning and a middle and an end for their goal, that does exist, but it is very rare. I think instead being able to see it bigger picture and say, okay, let's try to reach as many of these things as we can so you have as many options available to you as you can. But there are so many options even if you don't meet all the milestones if you don't have a diploma depending on where you live your kids can get a GED I was talking to my hairdresser the other day who said she went from grade 8 to grade 12 she tested out the um, she literally tried the GED exam passed it and that was it that's all she needed to do and now she had her diploma and was able to move forward into whatever she wanted your kids will be able to catch up if they're motivated and if it's what they want and as they grow and they mature and they work and they experience the world around them, they're going to have a much clearer idea of what they want. So just like we don't want to have that expectation on our children that they have to have it all figured out and they have to know exactly what they want now, I think you as the parent need to take that expectation off yourself. You don't need to, to make sure that for everything that they could possibly want to do, that you have checked off all the boxes for them so there's nothing holding them back. Because you can't possibly foresee where your child's going to do, go, and what God is going to do in their life. You can't. But but what you can do is you can give them the tools, you can be supportive, you can motivate them, you can inspire them, and you can walk alongside them. 
And if your kids aren't that into school, and later on they decide they want to go do a GED or they want to go do this or they want to go do that and they need more courses to get to where they want to go. One, you have not failed them and two, now that they've decided they want to do it, trust me, they're going to get better grades, they're going to work a lot harder because they are the ones making that decision for themselves. Your kids are transitioning. You have been homeschooling them possibly for a while and you've seen this transition from young kid of you're teaching them, you're, you, you, they need you for everything when they're younger. And then they transition to like middle school age, which we talked a little bit in our session um, with my mom where you know they're, they're just, they're needing you kind of to keep them on track a little bit more, but they're also needing a little bit of freedom. Once your kids are in high school, they are needing you to begin to just walk alongside them more of a peer situation where yes there's expectation and you're helping them and you're preparing them for life but at the same time your kids are only going to be as prepared as they decide they want to be and as they transition into adulthood as they transition into this next stage of their life they are the ones who have to make these decisions and we kind of get to transition over to being a little bit more of a bystander and um, somebody who's cheering them on. So I think take that pressure and expectation off yourself. You do not have to set your child up for everything they're going to do in their life. And God actually plays a much bigger role than we do in that. And we get to trust this process and walk alongside them. And so pray about it. Talk with your kids. Have an open dialogue with them. Look forward with anticipation and expectation and excitement for what God is going to do in their life. And then trust that you are only called to do what you are called to do, which is what is in front of you for this coming year. So I'm going to pass it over to Darcy. She's going to show you the nitty gritty of how she organizes and tracks and is able to convert gather around homeschool to be enough credits for graduation where she lives. Hopefully it gives you some ideas and inspiration and I'll sum it up at the end. Hi everybody, my name is Darcy. I'm the mom of 12 kids. I have, my oldest son is 21 and my baby is three months. And I have literally taught all of the levels of the units that Gather Round has published. So I, um, I'm pretty busy. Uh, we live in the Pacific Northwest, which is usually on the cold side of mild, and right now it is on the hot side of hot, which is really unusual for this area. But we are enjoying the beautiful sunshine. It's been wonderful. Today I'm excited to talk to you about one of my passions, which is homeschooling through high school. And the reason why this is a passion of mine is because I believe that the high school years, those teen years, are those years that are springboarding our kids into adulthood and there are a tremendous amount of influences coming at them from all these different directions. Their influences are paramount um, for a teenager. This is the time when their opinions are formed, when they are honing their skills that they had started as foundation um, in their elementary years. Uh, they are looking for purpose uh, they're often really insecure. Um, they're looking for acceptance and they're looking for understanding of themselves and the world that they live in and where they fit into that world. Um, and this is why I believe that homeschooling is a wonderful way to reach the heart of our teens, um, to reach the heart of my kids and to have those conversations, to have those discussions and to be over Contro controlling of what is being taught to our kids, what, um, what messages are being taught to our kids during these years. Um, so the first question that usually comes up when we talk about high school and homeschooling through high school and especially using unit studies for high school is, is it enough? And Rebecca Spooner has done some videos on that you need to make sure you watch her videos from this conference because I'm sure she'll touch on that again. But I just want to also say, is it enough? It depends on you. It depends on your educational philosophy. Um, let's ask this question. Whose well done are you working for? Because our, our default is to to, to view the public school model as 
what high school should look like, especially um, high school, um, as we homeschool. But I want to encourage you to think outside the box, to think outside of that model, and to see the potential that there is in different methods of gaining an education. Um, who, who's the one that is creating the standard? Um, how do they quantify the learning that a student receives? Um, because of the way pu public school is even structured, there is a need for things f like grading, like tests, like having separate classes that are at different times of the day for all these kids that you don't even need in your home school. So take some time to really think through what is your purpose of homeschooling, what is your why behind it, and why are you thinking about homeschooling your high school high schooler? What what are the things that are spurring you on to finding a different way? Maybe something's not working. Maybe you feel like you need to take time to reach the heart of your team. Teen, maybe you feel like they are not learning anything and don't care, which is a real huge problem for a lot of teenagers. I will tell you what Gather Round is not for a high schooler. It is not going to follow your public school model. It is not going to separate the subjects into little boxes that don't touch each other. It is not going to be boring. It is not endless pages of work and drill on one area. It is not washed out or mediocre and it is not really rigorous. And it is carefully and intentionally written. I've been using this for over a year with my high schoolers and I believe that all of it has been written very carefully and through the lens of a biblical worldview. Even if you are not a person of faith, this, this worldview is one that will help your child feel like there is purpose and meaning in the things that they're studying and that there, there's significance in the little things. This curriculum encourages curiosity even for the bored teenager that doesn't care. Um, it shows them how the world works, how things connect, like I mentioned before. It helps them to form their own opinions on hot topics and worldviews. And this is a very big thing. It's not shoving an opinion into their brain. It's giving them these different things that they can look at and they can form their own opinion based off of the information that they are actually researching themselves. It is not a, a brainwashing mechanism. Um, it is actually encouraging them to be independent thinkers, to be logical thinkers, and to be able to make mature decisions. Um, it asks really hard questions and hard questions. Um, it puts them in direct contact with great ideas. And the educator Charlotte Mason once said that when we put our students in front of great ideas on a regular basis that teachers will teach less and scholars will learn more and I do find this to be true with a bite size one page per subject sometimes two pages per subject a day these these little nuggets are the things that we start having conversations about at the dinner table with our teens that they will bring up in a conversation with a friend um, and you can tell those wheels are, are turning and that never happened with our other curriculum. And I'm not saying other curriculum is, is just bad. I'm just saying that this has worked for us to really spark those, those great ideas, those thought, thought processes. And I really feel like it plants, it's like a picture of a garden. It's like planting those seeds um, in a garden and it, it's just like a whole garden full of seeds a variety of seeds that are great thoughts and great ideas to help them to start developing new skills that they never even had to use before um, and I believe that it is already reaping a harvest of good quality fruit in my children and I have seen it in other families as well one of the big things that you should know about using Gather Round through high school is that it does set them up for college readiness. It sets them up for success. And the reason why is because 
it kind of passes the baton onto them instead of them memorizing all these facts that they're going to forget. It helps them to seek out and search out the whys. Why is my world work this way? Why, you know, why and how did this happen? And it introduces them to great um, inventors and missionaries and educators um, uh, and leaders throughout history that have formed ideas. Um, it helps them to research, a lot of research, and this is a big deal. So if you have a teen that um, has issues with internet access, um, that's a whole nother topic, but I just wanted to say there are things you can do to protect them as they're studying. And I know that there's been a lot of conversations about um, internet research. You do not need to have internet connection um, to do the research required. You would need to get a good encyclopedia, you would need to get a good dictionary, and um, try to either choose books ahead of time or um, get some books from your local library to help support their research because this is something that they are going to need to do if they are college bound. So let's just talk um, technically about how to do high school with a unit study. Um, one of the things to know right away is it's extremely adaptable. You do not have to do it like the public school does it. You can skim through the books. Um, say, your, say your child is struggling with an illness. You do not have to, to dig as deep during that season. You could just skim over it and read a lot of good books. Um, in fact, one of the educators that has developed the classic learning test, which is a college uh, entrance exam, says that the best way to prepare for these exams is to get a good overall education and to read good books. Don't ever um, underestimate the power of a good book. Um, if your kid hates to read, then do audiobooks. There's a lot of options that you can do, and I highly recommend having a book that you read out loud to your teen, even um, as a family, or just to them. I, I think you will find that a really special time. So you can dig really deep, you can follow all the rabbit trails, you can do all the experiments, you can do extra activities. There's a lot of options that are written into the curriculum, but they are not, they do not, you do not have to do all of them. You can do some of them um, or none of them. Every family is different and every student is going to be uh, skilled in different ways. Uh, I love that it can be interest led. I love that my kid can study more about Pluto if they want to, or they can watch more videos on the, the International Space Station, or maybe they want to um, do a whole uh, meal on Africa, African dishes and invite the family over you know you can spend more time on these things as your child is interested in them um, one thing to just say here is don't judge another person for how they use this curriculum um, everybody has unique challenges some have learning challenges some are going to do 10 units in a whole year uh, some are only going to do three or four um, don't judge how another person uses this because it is it's it's out of the mold, okay? And it is meant to be used for you and adapted for your needs. As far as recording your, your school that you do, all the hours that you do, and, and how intentional you need to do, be about the subjects that your high schooler is doing um, really depends on your high schoolers track of study um, and their end goal. So say they want to go to college and they want to study mechanical engineering. You already know that they are going to need to have certain subjects done. Um, you maybe wants to be to have his own home business or maybe he wants to go to trade school or maybe he wants to be a professional musician. Um, it really depends on what 
their goals are and their track that they're going to be going through. Um, so first of all, determine your child's track. And then second of all, you need to check your local graduation requirements. Some places do require grades. Some, some local um, governments do require a four-year plan written out before high school. Um, so check with your guidelines and see what they say, and then you can go from there. Um, so two different ways you can use a unit study and record it. Um, if you do not have to have a four-year plan written out and you don't have to have certain subjects done a certain years, um, then you can do the units in any order that you want to. You can do the units and record the different subjects that you come across. You can use a scope and sequence to help you with that in the front of each, each uh, unit. You can um, just record carefully the time that they spend on each subject and they will accumulate the time needed for a full credit over the period of four years. Or maybe it will be even less than that, but if you're carefully recording the time spent on each subject, then eventually they're going to have everything and much more than they actually need on a transcript, on a high school transcript. Uh, you'll find homeschoolers often have extremely big transcripts. It's not just English one, math, you know, one, and science, biology, and and uh, English literature. It's like all these different things. You can do a little bit of bot botany and zoology and um, world religions. You can, I mean, automotive mechanics. You can put all kinds of things on their transcript because they're actually getting to live their life as they're doing their school. Um, if, you, if you do have to record your four-year plan, if you do have to have certain subjects done, or maybe you're starting a unit study in the middle of their high school years and you've already done some of those subjects and really don't want to spend the time working on them anymore, then you can intentionally pull the subjects out of the units that you are you're using. You can use any unit in any order and just intentionally pull the elements of the subject that you're trying to focus on that year out of that and record it. You may need to assign some um, extra reading or um, DVDs or other things uh, um, like in the U.S. government, we use the U.S. government unit for our civics credit, um, and I had them watch the debates, and I had them um, write out who was in our local government, and you know, there's lots of different things you can do. Um, or the other option you can do is to choose units that are going to primarily focus on that area. This year, we are going to be doing economics. So we're going to talk. We're going to choose units um, like inventions and ideas, um, career and trade, entrepreneurship, um, artists, and we are going to have more of a focus on economics. Um, so you can do it either way. Um, here's an example. So say if you need physical science, world geography. British literature for your English science and history. You could use the units space, earth science, uh, rocks and minerals. Um, you could do Europe, Asia, Africa, Antarctica. That, those would be great ones for having a British literature uh, focus and you can just ha assign books from the book list that are British literature, or you can find your own that you feel like would really go along well with those different units. So there's a lot of different ways you can do it. And I know some of you are saying, I wish you could just give me like, this is my the plan right here. But um, homeschooling is not really like that. And you adapt it to your family's needs. Um, one more note about unit studies versus public school model um, is that your student will be able to study more in depth about subjects um, 
and with immersion it's kind of like a baby learning about its world around them and how they talk uh, it actually helps students to retain and apply information a lot better and more quickly and more thoroughly because it, it kind of cures in their brain because there's all these different connections that happen through this type of uh, this method of learning and I think it's awesome for a teen. So either way you do it with your high schooler, the key is going to be recording your time carefully. And one more note on that is you can record uh, studying uh, English and astronomy when you're writing a paper about space or um, you can do English and uh, history when you're reading a book uh, about history. Um, so you can record times for both of those subjects. I'm gonna do a flip through now of the tracker, the student tracker, and I'll talk a little bit more about the te technical aspects of recording time and then uh, talk a little bit about that. So here's our tracker journal. You can see right here on the front, they can have their, their name, school year, and grade on it. Right in the front, it talks about how to use the book table of contents and here's where the fun stuff starts so here we are um, on the subject resources page you can use this to record all of the supplements that you use if you do use supplements um, what source it's going to be if it's a DVD if it's a website if it's a textbook you can um, make notes on that uh, for all the different subjects that you're doing there's a spot for them to have prayer requests on um, praises. Um, we like to use these put on and put offs for the things that they're struggling with and what they're wanting to do instead. And this is a great place for just jotting down some goals on um, interests in life skills um, and any other notes that they have that they're thinking about as they're planning. This is a spot where they can record any times that they had um, opportunities to kind of stand out and lead either in a group type setting or a volunteer type setting. They can record when it was or how long, you know, between what dates it was. Um, and here, any awards or recognition that they received that quarter. And I especially love this because it's really um, helps to boost their self-confidence I think to see oh actually I, I did that and it also motivates them to be thinking about trying to find ways to serve um, and maybe doing things that they wouldn't not normally have an interest in but could be put on their um, put on their resume or their high school tran uh, transcript or um, show a, a future employer some people have to keep attendance. I didn't fill this all the way out, but you can see there's there's a spot for all three months for this quarter. You can write down any field trips you had. Um, here's It's kind of small here, but this is the basic idea of like, what is the four-year plan? What am I trying to keep track of? And you know what? It sometimes changes as you go through and you're like, oh, that did not work. Uh, I am definitely gonna have to try something different. So it just helps you to kind of have a spot to record things. Um, in any colleges or career interests that they have and near the end like on their senior in their senior junior senior year they are definitely going to want to be working on adding to their portfolio and building a resume which Google Docs has a template for resumes that are great and easy to use um, really encourage your your students to start just uh, filling it out as they go and if they just keep filling it out each year then it won't be such a big deal at the end um, and they'll be encouraged to see the things that they are working hard on actually um, matter in the end. So um, there's some important dates and the schedule. There's going to be an edit on this because the lines don't line up with the times, but you can see how this can be used um, just for like a basic schedule. I filled the whole thing out and it may not look anything like this for your student. Um, but just having a basic idea of what time you're going to do things, you know, some of us are going to use 
uh, have our high schoolers work independently and others are going to have us have them doing the teacher's guide with the rest of the family which I, I do encourage you to take the time to read the teacher's guide with your your high schooler I think um, I really do think that that's a good thing to to try to do I put workbook um, student notebooks um, sometimes they're just they're called a lot of different things but it's the the actual uh, book that the student is working in. So we usually do something like uh, this schedule. Um, and like we'll have a once a week violin lesson, have symphony, um, you know. So this is a good good thing to do. Um, I probably shouldn't have put concert here and swimming here because that would have been like a, a weekly type of thing. But you can sort of get an idea of what it would look like for a basic schedule for the quarter. You can also print this out um, separately and use it as a, a weekly schedule if they don't have like a student weekly schedule. Okay, so here is where you're going to start recording your times. I filled this one out um, with like estimated times on how long it sometimes takes my kids um, to do subject. I put just like TG for teacher's guide, WB for workbook, approximately how much time. Anytime you have something else that they have done, like a field trip, or they've read a book, um, or they've written a paper, um, that's the place to put it right there. There's a spot for you to record the total time for the week in a grade if they have a grade. And I put the grade up here and just circled it. It's just easier for me to see. Then you can have your totals at the end for this quarter. This is a whole quarter. Of working on history and you can even put up here on the history um, world geography or economics or um, US history or, or world history so this is a blank one and there is one for language arts science science labs which you need to have two science labs usually I should say um, for graduation Math is something that you will have to do on your own. It is not as part of the gather around units yet. Art, and there's a lot of art. Um, I was really encouraged by the art in the units because they're not overly complicated if they don't want to be. Um, you can have your student do the line drawing in the book, um, or they could, if they have like Procreate and an iPad and they're really into it, they could do their art on that and it would probably take them all day but hey look at art, art credit foreign language which you need to have usually have two years of foreign language and then there's some blank ones for if you have like bible pe occupational education um anything else okay so that would be one quarter and you can see here i kind of I'm, I like made fake numbers, so this is not an actual student's work. Um, you can put your the grade if they have a grade, and I didn't fill them all out, but there's a spot for you to do so and adding any other subjects that they are doing. So say they're doing a little zoology or botany or astronomy or something separately from the other things, um, debate, you know, those kind of things. Um, if you do the math, a, a credit is going to be about 160 to 180 hours per subject and so for a quarter you're going to be trying to aim for 40 45 maybe a little less per quarter but you're, you're going to find some quarters you're going to focus a lot on something and other quarters you won't so just kind of keep an eye on how much time it is and if it's not enough time then maybe they need to work a little harder on filling out their answers in their books Maybe they need to um, uh, do some more reading. There's a lot of different things you can do. Okay, so at the end of the book, there's a spot for them to put their websites and passwords that they access regularly. There's a place for important contacts, which is super helpful. And then we want it at the back of the book so that it was easy to flip to. Um, and then it even has a little page on how to calculate their total GPA. A lot of people are not quite sure how that works and hopefully that explains it really well. I'm not going to go into that right now because you can read that on there or look it up if you if you need to. 
and at the back they even have an official transcript. Now, you can do this um, transcript using this, this one. You can print one off. You can use the hslda.org um, transcript service. There's other ones out there in the community here, the Gather Around community. I think there's quite a few recommendations for different things. But you can see, um, you can build on this transcript. And there's a spot for grade credits received, GPA, cumulative GPA, um, the grading scale, notes, and then they all need to have the student name and the signature of the, the school superintendent, which is you. So hopefully that helps to show you a little bit about how to use this tracker. So when you're homeschooling through high school, it seems really scary at first, but, um, and I know because I've been there, <laughs> but really it can be a time where you have some wonderful connections with your teen and they start having a vision for their future. Um, so instead of looking at it as a dreadful uh, experience, try to think of it as an opportunity to really invest in their lives. I just wanted to make a, a couple little statements here at the end here about how time is our priority. Um, or maybe I should say the priority of time um, is a big deal in high school. Um, time is not a renewable resource and we have a limited season of opportunity, especially with our high schoolers getting ready to um, fly off on their own and, and do their own adulting things. So one thing to notice that we want to focus on helping teach our high schoolers how to be wise and especially wise to salvation. Um, there's a lot of things that are competing for their hearts in this time in their life. Um, so there's some verses that call us to use the best, have the best use of our time. Ephesians 5, 15 through 16. And Proverbs 24, 27 refer to time and the seasons that we live in. Um, some of the pitfalls that we will face when we are looking at time is apathy, just kind of being indifferent or like lacking that urgency to do anything. Um, abdication, which is to not fulfill our responsibility, responsibility or failure to fulfill a responsibility, like expecting somebody else to do what is actually ours to do. Um, and then another one is myopia, which is really just being nearsighted and only seeing what's in front of us right here instead of looking at what is happening or what's going to happen in the future. Um, I think all three of those uh, are symptoms of a teen going through a difficult time in their life. And so if, if you find yourself or your teen in these kind of pitfalls with time, don't despair and just ask the Lord to forgive you and ask him for his grace to be able to make the best use of the time that you have left. Um, just wake up to the fact that if, if you want something different to happen, you're going to have to be willing to, to change. You're going to have to be willing to um, maybe even make some painful sacrifices. Um, so again, like I said at the beginning, what are your goals? What are your whys for doing homeschool through the high school years? Um, and I just want to encourage you that no matter what the world says is success for school, um, it's the child's heart, it's the student's heart, and it's our hearts that really matter. So if you need to take time to address character issues and heart issues, you have permission to stop, 
to take a break, to take the time to really address those. And I just pray that you will be able to walk freely in the direction that the Lord is calling on your life. So thank you for taking the time to listen. And I hope that this has been encouraging and helpful. And I'm sure now you have a lot of questions. And of course, the Gather Around team is always happy to answer those. So you can email in, you can ask on the app, which is a fabulous resource. I highly encourage you to take full advantage of the app and how well organized it is. And I'll see you over there. Thanks. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed hearing from Darcy. She is a wealth of information. I think that we have a lot of ideas to go off of, um, but I guess my main takeaway for you, no matter if you're walking through this right now or if you're looking into the future, is exactly what I said at the beginning, to take the pressure off your shoulders and just have an open dialogue and enjoy this. Your time now, if you're looking at high school, your time with them is so incredibly short. The things that you get to impart are not necessarily checking off the boxes. You get to impart that relationship, that conversation, and you're setting this foundation for what their adult life is going to look like even in their relationship with you. So enjoy the journey. Don't get too bogged down with checking everything off and just really give it to God and trust that he is going to take over from here and lead your kids into great and amazing things in the months and years to come.